Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're gonna meet a family of four and they're gonna take us on a tour of their gorgeous tiny home. This tiny space really packs a lot of punch because not only does it provide privacy for the parents, but it also manages to have separate bedrooms for the kids and a work from home station for dad. The family is gonna explain why downsizing was right for them and how they often move their home due to their transient jobs. If you like these kind of videos about people living alternatively, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Welcome to TJ, AKA Tiny Journey. We're the Usebs, and we're, we're living, living the, the tiny, tiny dream. This is built by Mint Tiny Homes based off of their Canada gooseneck model. We've been living in TJ for almost two years now. Our original intention behind going tiny stems from being able to slow down and enjoy nature and look at the outdoors from a different perspective. All of the other perks, including reducing our carbon footprint and also reducing our overall expenses were tremendous, not to mention all of the travels and the different places and cultures that we could expose our children to. Part of the initiative to go tiny was my wife's a travel nurse and I do IT and I can work remotely almost anywhere. Being a travel nurse, we actually have to get an okay within a particular area that has a lot of hospitals that I could potentially move around in so that we're not moving the tiny house so much, but so that we find legal parking. Yes, we are RVIA certified. However, not every RV park allows tiny houses to park there. So one of the big things, if you can afford to get your own truck or have ability to move your own tiny house, that kind of gives you a little bit more leverage. So those are kind of the things that we keep in mind as it relates to where we're gonna park. And we do like to move about once a year. No more than that, although here and there it's been twice. We downsized from a 2,500 square foot home in Massachusetts. We decided upon this model based on price and specs that we wanted for our family. So we paid about 120,000 and that also included different upgrades, but also delivery to the first location that we parked at in Central Valley, California. We specifically designed the house, allowing space for the children to grow because we assume they're gonna be pretty tall. I've been raised to appreciate expanding your comfort zone. For the kids, helping them see us being pushed out of our comfort zone gives them the confidence to move forward too. But no matter what we experience, like as long as we've got each other, we've got a strong foundation, mm -hmm. no matter where we are. This is TJ, our 38 foot gooseneck trailer. Back here is all our hookups, pretty standard RV stuff. We don't have any tanks for our gray and black water, so our sewage just goes right into the septic tanks. One of the unique things about this build is that I'm a little tall, so since this is our bedroom area, we had the gooseneck trailer dropped a little bit just so that I would have enough headspace in the bedroom. So we had to get a truck that had a flat bed just so that we can pull this house. This is our more beautiful side. We have all our most of our windows here. We actually started off with a different paint and trim when we were having it built. We were kind of in a rush, didn't have much of a timeline where we could pick and choose our preferred color. We actually sanded down the trim, painted it, and this is now TJ's new look. Tell us how you like it. <laughs> Over here at the entrance, we have a custom built staircase. This is custom built by my wife. And the reason why it's custom built is because we wanted something that came apart pretty easily. So when it's time to leave, we just get up and go. As a husband, it's very important for you to make sure that your wife is happy. And since we're on the road and we're in the desert, she likes a little bit of green, just aesthetically. It just makes her feel nice and right at home. So this is where me and my son wrestle most of the time. When it gets really hot, we'll get a little tent to cover up and make sure that we uh, have some protection from the sun. But for the most part, this is just our little layout area. 
So this is TJ's exterior, and we're gonna go inside where my wife can give you a tour inside. So first we have our living room. We wanted to make sure, one, that we had French doors so that we can let in a lot of light, let in a lot of fresh air. But then also we wanted to make sure that we had enough seating for our family of four and also had a convertible option to allow for a guest to sleep here. In addition to our couch pulling out to a full-size bed, there's also storage here in the chaise section. And this is my husband's man cave. <laughs> So all of his toys are down here. Being that we're in a tiny space, we can't really rearrange the space that, that much. I kind of carry out my artistic desires and the pillows. So I like to switch out my pillows often um, or recover the pillows often. I have a tremendous love of plants and I get that from being an island girl myself from Haiti. And also my mother loves plants, so that's deeply ingrained within me. So throughout the tiny house, wherever I can fit in plants, I do fit in some plants. Nice for fresh air, but it looks pretty awesome. As for our shoe storage situation, before we went tiny, we actually stayed in four different tiny houses to try it out, different models with different configurations. And one of the early ones had a shoe storage situation similar to this, and that kind of just stuck out in my mind. So this is our shoe storage, which also doubles as a table, as extra seating, and currently as more plant display. A few steps in, we have our kitchen, which I really enjoy because it is bigger than a lot of the kitchens that I've been in before. We really enjoy our butcher block countertops. It makes it easy for cleanup. It's just a nice sleek look and it blends nicely with the farmhouse sink, which allows for plenty of dishwashing for the kids, not me and also for the dishwasher, which is such a time saver. We have a three burner propane stove, as well as an oven for baking. So we have a single rack for baking, but it's plenty for the kind of cooking that we do. We've got plenty of storage for all of our cups and plates and uh, spices, as well as additional pantry storage here. We do have quite a bit of drawer space, so we get to tuck everything away. I generally try to keep the counters nice and neat. Over to our left here, below the apartment size fridge, we have our snack drawer. So that's easy access for the kids. Lots of snacks down there for everyone. One of the most important things was making sure our home felt like a home and felt like uh, somewhere that was really safe for us as adults but also for the kids for them to feel normal for everybody to have what they needed and for not to skimp on the really important things including food so we have an apartment sized fridge which has the freezer at the bottom the refrigerator at the top which gives us plenty of space on the outside of the fridge because we homeschool and because my husband is a little bit type a we do have our monthly and weekly planner. We add pictures of the family. And now I'll show you the bathroom. As soon as you walk in over to the right, we have a very nicely sized linen closet. So we keep our towels, our sheets and blankets for the whole family. And then we also have all of our dirty laundry in the bottom half here. Because we are a taller family, we wanted to make sure that our counters as well as our sink were high enough that we weren't bending over, but we're still an adequate height for our children. So we have a raised sink as well as a floating vanity here. Our two drawers allow us to hide all of our junk away and keep the open area nice and clean. In our bathroom design, we wanted to make sure we had a couple of things. First, we knew that our kids were a little bit older, so we went with a standing shower, but my husband, he really enjoys being able to sit down, so we included a bench in the shower. We also wanted to make sure that throughout the tiny house design, we had black accents. So you'll notice the black accents around the shower surround, as well as throughout with the faucets in the kitchen as well as in the bathroom here. One of the things we absolutely would not compromise on because we are a family of four 
is the washer and dryer. So we opted for a stackable washer and dryer that allows us to not have to go to the laundromat on a regular basis. When we were deciding on the build and certain specifications, we did play with the idea of being able to be off-grid with a composting toilet, but what we did find out is a lot of locations don't actually allow composting toilets. They prefer for you to have a flushing toilet. And also, with the major change of downsizing from our big house to the tiny house, we didn't want that learning curve, so we went ahead and just went with a regular flushing toilet. On the stairs that I'm sitting on right now, there is plenty of storage. So extra toilet paper, extra toothpaste, soap, all of that is stored in this. And just a couple of steps up from here over the gooseneck, we'll head up to the master bedroom. Welcome to our bedroom, my place of refuge, to be honest. In here we have a queen size bed, which we do move around sometimes. Right now we have it sort of like in a day bed position. It allows the whole family to come in and kind of be able to relax and watch movies. We opted for a frame that's 18 inches up so that we have storage from here all the way back to the wall there. And we have storage kind of cube containers where we put winter storage, uh, winter clothes, as well as um, some of our linens go in there. Again, because I like plenty of light, we have three windows just in this bedroom, but we also wanted blackout because we wanted to be able to rest comfortably. We can easily adjust for the blackout portion and that dims the amount of light that we allow in. This is my self-made closet here where we measured out and then added some Ikea drawers. And I also added a little shelf here that slides out and I can use as a computer desk. This is my office space where I do all my work. Now I have the oversized monitor here. I like to think I'm super productive, so the big space makes me work on this, this, and that, and the other. Sometimes I just share the screen with the kids so that they can watch something next to me. This desk right here, I like to lift the desk up. So typically if uh, you've been to a professional, they tell you that the screen needs to be at eye level. So I have my keyboard that pulls out here, a little extra storage for any of my electronics. And this is where I'm productive, sometimes. And also if we need to use it as a dinner table, it scoots right on over where we can have dinner and a movie right here. As we go up to the loft, there's some additional storage in the stairs. Just one, two, and three. And let's head up to the kids' loft area. Welcome to loft number one. This is our bedroom. So we have a divider because, to be honest, I don't like being that close to him. Especially at night, because he kicks a lot. If we come on over here, we can find my brother who is playing on his Nintendo Switch. His area is Mario themed because that's his favorite. I have a bunch of astronaut stuff because I think it's interesting. Science is cool. I like to keep my fashion dresses because I'm what you would call a fashionista. loft is where we do homeschool, arts and crafts, and other activities. And we have a nice area to keep books and a little library space. The big home ownership debt, we wanted to no longer have that. We wanted to switch up the idea of all of the things that we were spending our money on and start experiencing life more. And the time we get with each other and the memories that we get to make is way more important than the things we acquire, than right. the things that tie us down, and the things we were just holding on to. There's a lot of opportunity in this lifestyle 
we want to share it with more people. We can do so much more living this lifestyle. With our kids, you know, as a couple, we can grow way more than we could if we were living in a, a situation where we were tied to certain things that maybe don't mean as much. Welcome to my 165 square foot tiny house. I've been looking for a backup power source for years. So I am really excited to showcase the Jackery 3000 with you today. It takes about 2.4 hours to charge when you're plugged into the wall. And I can also see how much power is coming in. Over here it tells me how many hours that it believes it'll run based off of how much power is going out of it right now. Once we start plugging things in, these numbers will of course change. Okay, so it is currently powering my tiny house. I just plugged it in. And with that, it says that just on this battery bank, it can run for up to 30 hours. That's without getting any power coming into the Jackery. So I would be thrilled if I was out here during a power outage and knowing that I had 30 hours of battery power. I'm gonna go ahead while we still have some daylight, plug in the solar panels and see how much charging we can get done. We've been getting an input between 200 and 400 watts. So we've really been able to charge back up the battery bank. When it comes to your carbon footprint, you're not burning fossil fuels. You are getting your electricity from the sun and there's nothing better than that. It is kind of fun finding the sun and powering your house with the sunlight. And since I'm using this as a backup power system, I'll just make sure that it's charged before the winter season, and then it stays charged for a long period of time. So if you guys are interested in this solar generator or one like it, Jackery is currently holding a flash sale with up to 25% off on select products from now until April 22nd. So don't miss your chance to snag one for your spring getaway by checking out the links in the description of this video.